All right, guys, day one, up early, New Mexico Oryx hunt. Let's go. Hit. We'll give her, we'll give her a minute to drop there. Dude, these are amazing, Beautiful. man. That is an excellent bull. That is unbelievable. God, they're beautiful. This was a phenomenal hunt. We saw tons of oryx right off the bat. This is on a little facility next to the White Sands Missile Base. Super lucky to draw the tag. It was an awesome time. Learned a lot about the animal. What they do is they have a chaperone with you because you're on a, a federal facility. He was super knowledgeable. Taught me a lot about the oryx and just, you know, one morning we were out here. They're absolutely stunning animals. They really are. Um, I think until you actually go hunt them, you don't realize how beautiful they are, even compared to other wildlife. So this is a bull and Dave kind of showed that to me. They have deeper ridges. Uh, than the cows do and then their horns are straighter where the cows have a little swooping uh, to their horns and then the other thing with um, the bulls he was telling me is they don't get as long as the cows cows are typically the longer longer horned animal the other thing that's amazing is I'm, I'm amazed we actually saw some yearlings but their horns were already like that long so it's amazing to me um, how quickly they grow horns so I'm going to go ahead and field dress uh, this bull and uh, we're going to get him hauled out of here and deal with the rest of him So I'm going to rug this bull, so I'm going to try to go as straight as possible. And this bull I'm going to rug and just uh, euro mount him. So I went up high here, but that's just my preference when I'm doing that. If you're going to cape the bull, you want to go back in here. So in this situation, guys, I'm actually just gonna make a nice rug with the uh, cape and hide of the oryx. So yours truly is gonna do, be doing the salting and all of that process. So when I'm the one in, in charge more so, I try to do this all the time for taxidermist's sake, but if I'm the one that has to deal with it, I'd be really careful when I skin. And you can see here, you know, all this. This, if you leave that on the hide, you're gonna have to flesh it off later. So take your time when you're skinning and you can get it off better and you can see here as long as I'm trampolining the hide and what I mean by that is like creating some bounce to it I can take my blade and almost go you know directly at the hide and that's the only way you're gonna keep from pulling up a bunch of muscle see and you're gonna end up with a lot of that stuff a lot of people want to go in here and cut right at the seam and that's fine, but you're gonna end up with muscle. The other thing people do is they create back tension here, where the, these are my fingers right here. And what happens is then they cut and they puncture the hide because there's no bounce to the hide. But if you have, if you have some bounce to the hide and you're pulling back here and create that trampoline, you can get that cape clean as a whistle. And if you're the one doing the salting, it's gonna save you a lot of hassle. The other thing you can do that's a trick with them is you can try to push your hand up in this seam and that'll work too, particularly further on the process when you've loosened up a bunch of that hide. So one big trick when you're getting by yourself is make sure and use gravity. All right, so get it so the guts are gonna spill down and go with gravity. If you don't do that, you don't have gravity help you, you're gonna struggle to get all those guts out. The other thing is particularly on a white hided animal, you know, a, a sheep or an oryx in this case, where they have white hide and dark hide, you really do wanna keep as much blood off of that white hide as possible because it will stain the white and it's tricky to get it out. There's a process, you, you, you know, it can come out, but it's not like a mountain goat. See a mountain goat, it's completely white. So those hides can just be completely bleached. When you have an animal that has multiple colors, you can't do that. So you wanna be careful about how much blood you get on these white patches. Here, the one downside of gravity, is you just gotta be really careful. You can see that, I gotta use both hands.
my kind of pack out. So anytime you're skinning anything for a rug, bear, elk, oryx in this case, you want to be mindful of the color, okay? And visualize how that rug is going to come out. Anything that you cut, you cut behind on the back, that's going to go into the, the sides of the rug. Anything you cut in front of will go into the back. In this case, because all of this nice white's here, I'm going to try to keep all the white together and have it go forward so it'll be on the side of the rug. So I'm going to go up the back of the leg here and keep all that color in one spot. A lot of times on other animals, I'll actually do the opposite. I'll come down in here so that white rump goes back. Just personal preference, but it's something to think about when you're rugging animals or, or keeping hides, you're gonna just uh, just tan. On animals that are, they got long tails like this, even deer like a white tail or something, if you wanna skin that tail out for a hide, you're gonna be really tempted to this point, pull down and just try to strip the tail off. And what happens is if you do that, a lot of times you pull the tip of the, the tail off like you'll lose this whole chunk down here so just be patient and skin that tail completely out so you don't ruin a fairly important part of the animal when you're doing this so just to show you guys that to the very end here so tail to the very end and keeping it all the way to the very end here you want to get everything out of there so it doesn't rotten but if you pull that tail out and try to yank it right here you can lose this big chunk of stuff at the end when you're doing your own skinning this is what you want all white not a lot of meat on there Okay, that's a saltable hide if you keep it like that. The trick with your knife is just touch them up. Don't, don't get them real dull and then try to recover. You gotta touch them up as you go through the process. All right, if you wanna avoid flank meat on your cape, you have to be real meticulous in here. So if you can see here on this flank, you see how all that meat is attached to the flank. It's not on the hide. In order to do that, you have to get in the mode of using the angle of your blade against the hide and keeping that trampoline effect, okay? That's the only way you're gonna keep that flank on there. These works are actually particularly difficult, but elk and deer are the same way. You'll end up with a whole bunch of stuff here that you've gotta clean up later if you're salting your own hides if you're not meticulous about making sure you keep that flank meat on the animal. And the best way, don't get it started. Don't get it started staying on the hide. On spots like this where you got exit wounds and entry wounds, you really want to try to keep as much of that gunk off your hide because that's a source that's a source of uh, bacteria and stuff that'll make a hide slip. So be meticulous there in particular to not that it gets all mushy so you have a tendency to want to pull it off onto the hide but you really want to be careful about that and limit how much of that that kind of crap ends up on your hide. So one thing about when you're taking a whole hide off, it's hard to get this head off of. So you just gotta meticulously work your way down here so you can. All right, so it's a very tough one man job, but here's how I like to do it. Here, basically, once you get it skinned, put it put it flesh to flesh, so it doesn't it uh, it doesn't dry out any more than it already has. And you can see that's what you want. And we could salt that and ship it via UPS or whatever. I'm actually gonna package this up and uh, put it on some dry ice and just take it home with me on the airplane. I've got an older video on the channel that covers the details of face caping. Here, I'm just gonna show you a quick time lapse on this Oryx, and they're all pretty much the same. Depending on what you want to do with the hide, sometimes you're going to take the skull out a certain way. For instance, on this Oryx, I actually want to retain the coloration of the face. The face, I want to keep that on the hide and tan it with the hide so it's actually with the hide. I think that's really neat. So in this case, I'm not going to be able to take you know, the skull and horns out the tube of the neck. I'm going to have to uh, take them out just back here. I'm going to try to keep the cut limited here where I can pull the skull out this way. Typically, you're actually going to be caping the animal for you know a mount or something. You can come up here and you're going to have a big cut here. You can pull the skull out that way too. Uh, it just depends on the situation. 
You know, sometimes you're just going to do a European mount and you're not concerned about the cape that's on the face. And in that case, you can pull the skull out however you want. You can take the face off in pieces if you want. It doesn't really matter. But if you're trying to retain the structure of the face, um, you've got to figure out how to get that skull out. What I found works best, and you'll see it in the time lapse, is I try to work from the front of the animal down to the eyes and to the base of the ear. I try to get this started at least pretty well down the animal first. It makes it a whole lot easier to then go to the back to the, you know, the end, you know, right at the base of the skull there and then cape the animal back into your front cuts. That's way easier, particularly in this case where you've got a whole hide attached, right? Or even a big, you know, big long elk cape, big long oryx cape where you've got a bunch of hide to deal with. It's much easier to get this down first because when you start working to the base of the skull, you've got all that hide, you've got to fold over and it, and it affects your mobility a lot. So you're gonna see in this time lapse, I work down this way and then come in here and then pull the skull out that way. So that's the plan guys. All right guys, so you saw the process. I've got everything off here, eyes, ears, everything's intact. There's no eyelids still on the skull. None of that stuff is still on the skull. We make sure we keep everything. We got inner lips here so we can work with that. The taxidermist can work with that. We've got the whole ear. We can go through that process next. The main thing is you don't want to end up with lips that are still on the skull, you know, eyelids that are still on the skull, that sort of thing. This is one of those situations here where I actually try to do the work post post getting it off the skull. So it's kind of unlike the hide. The hide when I'm skinning an animal and I know I'm gonna salt that hide and use it as a rug, I try to be really meticulous and keep as much of the you know, sinew and all those layers, any of the meat and muscle and fat, keep that on the meat. And it's easy to do that when you're skinning, right? Just be slow and careful. But with the skulls, look, I'm gonna have to deal with this anyways. I'm gonna have to be meticulous about the face because I've gotta turn the lips, um, I've gotta turn the ears, I've gotta turn the eyes before I salt it anyways. So why not just be conservative and get everything off of the skull onto this. So all the eyelids, extra lip, all of that, keep it on the face cape so you can deal with that when you're, when you're going through the secondary process that I'll show in another video, just that turning process. Just so you know, in this case, an oryx, an elk, an elk's gonna take you about the same time, maybe a little bit longer, um, just because the antlers, you gotta deal with them a little bit, a little bit more. Uh, this is actually fairly easy to maneuver around, move, maneuver around. But one thing I'll say is this video, guys, I did it in like 25, 30 minutes. Just so you know, so you're not frustrated when you first start doing this, it might take you a couple hours, okay? And it's okay to do that. Take your time so you don't mess it up. If you mess a face cape up, the one downside of it, and this kind of goes along with why I'm, why I'm conservative, is it's very hard for a taxidermist to fix it. If you cut an eyelid off, you cut a tear duct off of a bull, you cut a lip off, you, cut, you, you, know, you come out of the nose here and you cut this nice little smooth area off, you know, and it's stuck on the skull, a taxidermist, it's gonna be very hard for them to fix that. And a lot of times on taxidermy, people are looking at the face of the animal. So you need to be careful, just a, just a word of caution. You know, just because I do it in 30 minutes doesn't mean you're gonna do it your first time in that amount of time. And just take your time, don't get frustrated by it. You're not doing anything wrong. Just your first few goes while you're learning that anatomy and being careful, it's gonna take you three or four times as long, probably two hours or something like that. We're gonna jump onto the next step. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get this hide in the face cape and all that, I'm gonna roll it up, get it frozen for the trip home because I'm gonna check it in in my baggage. The skull, what I'm gonna do on the skull is all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut as much of the bigger chunks of meat off of it. I'm gonna salt it down really good. Just rub that salt in real good. I'll get this feed out of the orcs. His mouth, this, this orcs was actually feeding while I shot him and then he never, he never dropped the feed out of his mouth. But anyways, um, I'll get that out, I'll clean it up. But in general, I'm gonna salt, salt the oryx really good for shipment. And then I'm gonna double bag it really well. I'll use some shrink wrap on there too. I'll get it all wrapped up. I'll wrap the horns to protect them. And then I'll put it in a box and I'll ship it via UPS. You just gotta make sure that that thing's not gonna leak or stink and you're gonna have no problem shipping it via UPS. So on to the next step. All right, so before you roll up a hide to freeze it, 
because that's what I'm going to do in this situation. I'm going to freeze it so I can get it in my checked in baggage, but I'm going to deal with it later on, right? Or you're going to take it to a tax service and they're going to have to deal with it. So you have to think about the next step in the process. The next step in the process for me is this hide actually has very minimal like fleshing to get done. It's pretty darn clean. So I'm not, I'm not super concerned about the body of the, the animal right now. I don't have a whole lot more time to spend on it, but the actual face, this part of the animal, I have quite a bit of time uh, that I still need to put in on that, the face of the animal. So I need to do the lips. I need to do the ears. I need to do the nose. I need to do the eyes, right? So that's going to take some time. So what I'm going to actually do is I'm going to take this and I'm going to roll it. So the face is on the outside. And what that'll do is the, this cape and stuff will stay frozen, but as it thaws out, as this chunk thaws out, that face is going to thaw out first and I can start working on it first. And the nice thing about that is I'll have a cold structure. This hide right here, I'll have a nice cold structure uh, to keep. So once I have it out and I start working on that face, even if I have to take a little break or whatever, I can just take that face and I can stick it back on the frozen hide and it'll keep that cool so I can keep working on it. One of the problems, if I were to actually put that face in the middle here, then I have to wait for the whole thing to thaw out. And by the time I started working on the face, everything else would have been at room temp temperature for quite a while. Plus, it was gonna be at room temperature the whole time that I'm working on that face. So that can be a problem. So you gotta think about it before you freeze these, what's the next step? If, you're, if everything's done on an animal, in the ideal world, the best thing to do is put the face in the inside because it's less likely to get freezer burned inside. But you've got to plan what your next step is. So I'm going to roll this up, put the face on the outside, and then bag it up and freeze it. Once I have it flesh to flesh, I'll just get it where it's, I'll get it where it's just consistent across here. An example of what I'm talking about is if the tail, if the tail, <clears throat> if this tail still needed to be split and pulled in the and the tailbone needs to be pulled out. Sometimes that'll happen. It's just easier for you to just cut the tail, um, cut the tail out at home or whatever. It's just hard to do it in the field for you. If that were the case, you'd put the tail on the outside with the face so you can get to it. But in this case, that's already all done. So I'm gonna double bag this. Two garbage bags, get it frozen and get it ready to take with me on the airplane in my checked baggage. This video is actually part of a whole series of videos I did with this Oryx. And I basically went through the whole process just for me personally. If I was trying to save money, simplify, just take out all the risk in terms of the meat and taxidermy on a trip where I was traveling, you know, either driving a long distance or jumping on an airplane, some situation where I had to deal with the animal. I think this is something that we just don't talk about enough for the traveling hunter, right? Everybody is into planning hunts, you know, getting the tags, all of that angle is covered. But the secret source of anxiety that we don't talk about is this stuff, right? What do we do with the meat? What do we do with the cape? What do we do with the hide, antlers, horns, all that stuff? We worry so much about it, but nobody talks about it. And that's what this video and other videos on the channel related to it are for, to help you guys with that. The next video I suggest you guys check out is how I actually pack all this stuff in my checked luggage on an airline. For this Oryx hunt, I probably saved over a thousand dollars by dealing with this all on my own. I didn't use a taxidermist and I was able to take the vast majority of the meat, the whole hide, the whole hide on the body, not just the cape, take that home with me and the skull and horns with me all on the airline for under $300. Thanks folks, I'll see you next time.